Welcome to more World of Warplanes content from the Noble Q, and in this video we're going to take a look at the Tier 4 Premium British Fighter, the Hurricane 1A, and also talk a little bit about teamwork. Here's the Hurricane 1A on the tarmac outside my hangar, and of course this is one of the iconic aircraft in the game from the Battle of Britain. And I'm making this video in response to a viewer request, but I'm sorry, I forgot lost the note of who it was who requested it so if it was you I do apologize thank you for making the request and this video is for you. The next section of the video will be the customary statistics of the aircraft but if you don't want to look at a spreadsheet then use the links below the video to skip ahead to another section. First let's go over how this spreadsheet works very quickly. Um, Columns C and D contain the statistics for the Hurricane 1A and all other Tier 4 fighters occupy two columns off to the right, as you can see. The characteristics you can see in the hangar are shown down the left and the statistics for each of the aircraft are in the body of the spreadsheet here. Where there's green, it's best in class. Light blue is second best in class. Purple is third best in class. And the gold colour indicates that the aircraft is a premium or reward aircraft. If we just drop below, the logic is reversed and we're looking at the worst in class, which is the dark, most solid red. And then a slightly later, lighter shade of red is second worst in class, and the lightest shade of red of all is third worst in class. Okay, so let's look at the statistics. Starting at the top with gun armament, immediately it looks like very good news. The rating for the armament is 11, which is best in class, and it's shared with the uh, Tech Tree British fighter, the Bristol 146. Now, this may surprise experienced players of the game, and the reason being is that it's not just about DPS, it's also about range. And the range on these guns is only 1,444 feet. And if you quickly look at something like the HE-112, you'll see it's capable of doing damage, significant damage, at 1,903 feet, the I-17 can do the same at 1969, the BF-109B, 1969 again, even the P-36 Hawk can do it at 1640, the KR-43, 1969. I think you're beginning to get the picture. This is a high DPS machine, but you have to be up fairly close and personal in order to exploit the DPS, and that's a drawback. If we look at the survivability, uh, it's also good news. This is quite a rugged fighter. It's got approaching American levels of ruggedness. If we look over at the American aircraft, you can see that uh, the best in class is actually the prototype Corsair, uh, which is rated at six. But a similar sort of survivability as the Model 81A. Now, there is one slight caveat to that. The fire resistance is not appalling. In fact, it's actually shown as third best in class in here, but you'll see it's also second worst in class when we go down, go down below. Um, the fire resistance is not up to American standards, so bear that in mind. After that, the news gets progressively less good. The airspeed is pretty average. There's nothing to um, be excited by here. The boost duration, there are only three values for fighters uh, at tier four. That's 10, and there's only one aircraft with 10 seconds. It's the 2PA over here. Eight seconds, which the Hurricane has, and then six seconds, typically for the turn fighters, such as the Bristol, the Japanese aircraft. Maneuverability is distinctly average. This is not a turn fighter. In fact, it looks much more like a, an altitude fighter, a high energy fighter. For instance, the Bristol 146 easily can outturn it. So can the HE-112. The I-17 certainly will, and as you can now probably guess, the Japanese aircraft are vastly more uh, manoeuvrable. And in fact, there's a, another British premium uh, biplane, the Phantom, which is getting on for Japanese levels of manoeuvrability as well. So you can see that the Hurricane is uh, f lagging far behind many of the fighters it's going to encounter. Again, it really does look like uh, American levels of manoeuvrability, but again, there's a catch. And the catch here is in the altitude performance. The American aircraft, by and large, have very good altitude performance, which compensates for the lack of maneuverability. They also have high speed, which the Hurricane doesn't have, and that allows them to employ high energy ta tactics, one of which is to be at high altitude and dive down on an aircraft and then boost away having delivered an attack. This is not going to happen in the Hurricane 1A. As you can see, the altitude performance 
is again pretty average. The BF109B actually has the highest altitude performance. And as you can see, the light blues and the purples are occurring with the American aircraft. If we quickly drop down, we've already talked about the fire resistance. Um, we can ignore the boost figure, but as I said, there's only three of those. Maneuverability, um, let's just note that the uh, roll rate is really poor on the Hurricane. You're not going to roll away from aircraft because it has the worst in class roll rate. And also its characteristics degrade quite quickly as well. There's only 140 miles an hour range in which its maneuverability is not compromised. So that makes it a little bit tough as well. And the last thing to notice is that it's got very nearly the worst climb rate in the end of the tier four fighters. And in fact, as we go along here, the only one that's worse is the somewhat similar C714. Um, the C714 has far worse gunnery though. So in that sense, the hurricane's better. So all of that tends to add up to a fairly average aircraft that just happens to have really good firepower, albeit at pretty short range, and reasonable survivability. But in this game, World of Warplanes, that doesn't necessarily count for as much as it would do in, say, World of Tanks, where a good survivability figure, a good slug of hit points, might allow you to take that one extra shot before disappearing around a corner and hiding. Um, in this game, basically, you may have, for instance, 60 more hit points than the Bristol 146, but if something gets on your tail and you can't get away from it, either using speed or maneuverability, they're going to be disappearing fairly quickly. Therefore, the Hurricane 1A, in my opinion, is best flown as a gun platform. You want to go into sectors and try and uh, whittle down the enemy as quickly as possible with your firepower before they can turn their attention to you. And to do that, you need to fly as part of a group because if you're isolated, then of course the enemy aircraft will turn on you because they've got nothing else to do. And in the replay coming up, we're going to see a very good example of teamwork paying handsome dividends. Let's show you how I've set my Hurricane 1A up. Um, it's specialised. Therefore, I've got all of the equipment and consumable slots available to me. And let's see how I've filled them. And I've opted to improve the accuracy of uh, the guns. Now, I didn't talk about this in the section on the numbers, but the dispersion angle on the guns is about 0.8, which means roughly going to be something between one and a half and two feet circle at 100 foot range. Uh, and of course, that's true of meters as well. It'll be a, a one and a half to two meter circle uh, where your bullets uh, um, fly uh, at 100 meters. That's typical of machine guns. The good thing is you've got a 20 second burst, which is a good long burst as with all machine guns. So once you start firing at something, once it's within range, you're going to pull it down and not have to worry about your guns overheating. Nonetheless, I've sought to improve the accuracy of the guns. And then I've opted to go for a maneuverability build. Um, I don't think there's much point in trying to build this for speed. You might, it's uh, uh, something you may wish to try, but I don't think you're gonna get this fast enough to compete with the aircraft um, such as the BF109B or the American aircraft. And what is for sure, you're not going to be able to use that speed at altitude anyway to compete with those aircraft. So I've opted for the lightweight wing frame and lightweight power unit in order to increase my maneuverability. We'll talk about increasing that even further in a moment when we come on to the pilot. But for consumables, as it's a single seat fighter, I've put on a fire extinguisher, pneumatic control assist to help me in dogfights, Engine cooling for an extra 10 seconds of burst. So if I have eight seconds to begin with, I'll get 18 if I deploy this. And then universal ammunition, of course, I don't use gold. Now, as far as pilot skills are concerned, um, this is actually the dedicated pilot for the Hurricane 1A that I originally started working on back in 2018. But this is a premium aircraft, so you should use it as a crew trainer. And you'll see the maneuverability figure go up in a moment when I put in, for example, my highly trained but still needing more training, Spitfire 14 pilot. And you saw that maneuverability figure possibly shoot up by another um, five. So this maneuverability figure has become adequate, but of course it's still lagging way behind the true term fighters. If you get into a term fight with one of those, you will lose. 
and it's difficult for you to get away from them because your speed is fairly poor. So this comes back to what I said in the numbers section. If you happen to watch that, you'll know this already. This aircraft ought to be kept as part of a group. You ought to take aircraft in front of you by surprise and destroy them before they can do anything about it. If you get isolated and the aircraft that you're attacking can turn their attention to you because they've got nothing else to do, the likelihood is that you're going to lose your plane rather than the enemy lose theirs. Just a point on the skills. If you're building a new pilot, I would probably go for aerodynamics um, expert first. You may want to put on the engine guru and the marksman one skills next, or you could consider acrobatics, um, sorry, aerobatics expert. Right, I think that's enough about the aircraft. So let's go and have a look and see how it performs in battle. Here we are on the Scorching Sands map. It's the invasion variant with five sectors laid out in the five spots of a die pattern. There's a central garrison, two flanking garrisons, and two flanking air bases. Now, strategically, the air bases are most important because they have special characteristics. Not only do they convey the three resources every five seconds, but they can also be selected as the spawn point for a new aircraft. You can select a different aircraft of the same tier if you've been destroyed, or you can uh, entirely repair your aircraft. The garrisons just convey the standard three resources every five seconds. The central one is more important than the other two because it allows easy access to all the other sectors. However, as I've already mentioned in both the numbers section and in the hangar, the tactics on this map are not necessarily determined by uh, what's strategically important. If your team decides that garrisons win games, you will have to go with your team with the Hurricane 1A, because if you get isolated attacking an airbase, which in theory you should go for because that's the most important sector on the map, then you will lose your aircraft and you will do your team no good at all. So tactically, in this particular instance, stay with your team. Talking of the team, we have Evil Bird 1955, and I want you to keep an eye on him throughout this forthcoming replay in his heavy BF1110B. We are top tier, I should have noted. We have three tier threes, a Hawk 75M, an F3F, an FW57 heavy. The enemy has an I-17, which is highly maneuverable, so I don't want to get into a turn fight with that. A P-43 that could cause Evil Bird in his BF-1110B a bit of a problem. And then they also have three Tier 3s, an I-16, a FW-57 Heavy and a KI-27. It's hard to say who's got the advantage in terms of aircraft here. I guess most people would probably say we have because of the presence of the BF-1110B. Let's see how the battle turned out. Now, there's a garrison directly in front of the spawn, so clearly that's where we go first. Generally on this map, I will, will then swing right to the airbase and attempt to capture that. I use a little bit of boost to get in towards the air defence aircraft as quickly as possible. One chooses to fly below me, and with a very short burst, I remove over half its health. I then swing round to address another one. And once I get the guns to connect, you can see that I strip the health away extremely quickly. Now I want you to take a look at the airfield. You can see there's a red circle flashing above it. And this is Evil Bird. He's indicating where he's going and what he's going to attack. He's used the F2 key for that. And I've replied with the F5 key indicating that I'm going to join him in attacking that sector. This is a feature of this entire game. Evil Bird shows where he's going at all stages in the battle and I link up with him, and it works, as you will see. If you don't know those command keys, F2 for highlighting a sector, F4 for highlighting an aircraft you have in your reticle, an enemy aircraft that is, and F5 for uh, affirmative, do learn those commands, they're extremely useful and they're imperative in teamwork if you're not part of a flight and can't actually speak to somebody through something like Discord or TeamSpeak. Quickly stripped down an air defence aircraft. An evil bird who just flew below me has already done lots of work here. He's indicating that we should go to the central sector, and I agree 
with that and tell him that I'm going to do so as well. So we've already got two sectors in very short order. Now I'm not sure I like Keeblebird flying this low in the heavy, but since he's chosen to do it, I'm damn well going to support him. I find the I-17. Fortunately he's not paying attention to me, which is exactly the situation you need in this aircraft, and I'm able to knock him out very quickly indeed. I'm then able to take away um, an FW-189C ground attacker. Swing round to address the other ground attacker. We've already got the sector. Get the ground attacker. Look for the final aircraft attack in this sector. It's destroyed by Evil Bird. And I swing round, anticipating that since the other airfield hasn't been attacked, and as you can see, Evil Bird pings it, that's where he's going to go. And again, I say that I will support him. And off we go. And the speed of our attack has been such that the enemies barely managed to get out of the first sector. I pick up the I-16. I have good turning skills, so I can use this serviceable maneuverability against aircraft people or bots that uh, don't turn so well. A defence aircraft falls, comes in front of my guns, the second one does. I address the aircraft behind me in case it's beginning looking to shoot me down. It becomes a victim. And we have our full sector in very quick time indeed. Well, there's only one sector left to attack, so you can probably guess where Eagle Bird is going to ping now. He's already pinging it. It's off to the right of the screen if you look. It just disappeared as I turned round. And I say, I will join him in the attack. Evil Bird deals a crushing blow to the KI-27. I begin to look for air defence aircraft. One begins to fly, trying to take down our ground attacker. I keep an eye to make sure that nothing else is likely to catch me by surprise. I see the I-16, the human player, happens to be on one health point. I select him, because I know he's going to flip the scepter, and we have all five. A few minutes into the battle, and we've already discombobulated the enemy so greatly that it's hard to see how they'll come back from this. Now, something I want uh, you to keep an eye on is how quickly the points total is progressing. It appears, and I was counting this, that instead of resources accumulating every five seconds, if you get superiority, they accumulate approximately every two seconds. Now, this was taken away in an, uh, an earlier patch, I think in 2018, but it seems to have come back in a later patch again. And it's a bit of a shame, because it means when you get superiority, games end very quickly. Nonetheless, it is what it is, and I'd rather have superiority than have it against us. And conveniently, the aircraft have been coming out of the spawn more or less one by one. I do believe Evil Bird got bomb trapped there, but I knocked down the aircraft in front of him. Akamatsu Medal, 13,130 points in a battle that lasted less than five and a half minutes. That was the power of teamwork. Reviewing this battle's outcome, we can see it was a four chevron battle or a grade 2 fighter if you prefer, 105,699 credits or silver gross, that's with a premium account bonus, uh, and that accounted for about 35,000 of the, those credits. If we open the message box we can see that there were no expenses, the aircraft wasn't destroyed and I used prepaid consumables, 2,220 free experience with various bonuses, 111 free experience with a premium account bonus, and a token which was for a first medal of the day, the Akamatsu. Turning to the personal score tab, as this is a four chevron battle, you won't be surprised that none of the car class specific missions are complete. Um, but for a such a quick battle, uh, that was quite a good outcome. 
13,130 personal points, three sectors captured again, signifying that uh, we didn't do a great deal of defending. We moved from sector to sector, supporting uh, the player in the heavy, Evil Bird. 14 aerial targets destroyed, 1,697 uh, damage, critical damage uh, 14 hits, capture points 420, and as we can see, the split on that, unsurprisingly, is heavily weighted in favour of attacking, 260 points versus 160 for defending. On the team score tab, we can see that we were first both by personal points and by chevrons, and really, Evil Bird here um, dictated the course of the battle and is actually largely responsible for the win, therefore. On the opposition side, a valiant effort by the I-17, but the rest of the enemy aircraft were simply overwhelmed by the speed and ferocity of our attack. That concludes my look at the Tier 4 British Premium Fighter, the Hurricane 1A, which has good guns, is fairly robust, but has lacklustre manoeuvrability and altitude performance. And in fact, I suggest that the most important asset that you can have for this aircraft is teamwork. At the very least, you need to stick with your combat group in order to uh, maximise the potential of those guns, because if you get isolated, you probably will be in a whole world of trouble. I hope you found that useful, and that if you did, you'll come back and see my future content. But until then, this is the Noble Q signing out.